This is a true story that, that I have witnessed myself. Yeah, so it's, I haven't heard it from someone else, I've witnessed it myself. True story, and probably some of you will, will remember once I start saying it. This mother, who lived in the Middle East, I won't mention the country. Um, she, got this, uh, she got married, of course, became a wife, and then became a mother. At a very early stage of her marital life, the husband passes away. She was still very young and very beautiful. She was still very young and very beautiful. I know this family. But this mother, this young mother, and this beautiful looking woman decided that I will never remarry again lest I bring a man who becomes a stepfather to my children not knowing if he is going to abuse them or not. I will not take that risk. Therefore, she decided to sacrifice all her life or the rest of her life in raising her children and providing the best for both of them. She had two sons. She still has two sons. God bless them all and bless all of you. So one day she decided as the children started growing older, she decided to take him to a country where they will have a better life, a better future, more secure life. She migrated eventually with a lot of hard work with her two sons to Australia. She lives in Sydney. She worked extremely hard. Single mother. Raised the children with a sweat. The children became teenagers. The younger one adored his mom to such degree after God it was mom on earth. This much he adored her. He never ever broke her word. He never ever said no to his mom. Whatever mom wanted, whatever mom asked for, he would jump like crazy. Yes, ma'am. He became 16, started exploring, came across some other guys, and they became mates. Mate. So he had some friends. And then one day he went out with his friends, came back late. Mom started talking to him. My son, don't be late, please. I'm not comfortable with these guys that you're mixing with. I'm not happy, my son. He would ignore. So she asked him to be home by 10 p.m. First time, 10 p.m. After a week, two or three weeks, to cut it short, he started coming back at 12. He started coming at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. After a few months, he started coming the second, the third. After a week home, not knowing mother where her son is and where his, where, where his whereabouts. For a week, she would not know where he was. Searching for him frantically. What has become of my son? Got to a stage where he started swearing at his mom, shouting and yelling, and also trying to bash his mom. The angel became a devil because he mixed with so-called friends. The mother calls me. Please, Father, come. I'm losing my son. I went to their place. I sat with him and I told them off in a nice way because I know the family. And I, I said to him, I want you to come to Bible preach to the church. This Friday I want to see you in the church. He came. Once, twice, disappeared. I went again. I called him back to the church. He came. Once, twice, disappeared. After one year, the mother calls me. My son has been caught by the police. It's a huge case. He is facing 15 years to 25 years imprisonment. So I went.
those people that he associated himself with while he was out free, they laughed in his face, they loved him, they said, come on, mate, let's go, let's do this, let's do that, let's have fun, you only live once, mate, who cares about your mom? Of course, why would you care about your mom? Because the mom is the one who gave her life for you. Mom is the one who, who worked hard day and night, nonstop. Mom is the one who sacrificed. Mom could have remarried and had a much better, easy life where that man who was going to be her husband to sustain her and support her. But of course, mom decided to give up on her, on her life, on her well-being, on her comfort, in order to make her children comfortable. Then why on earth would you think about your mom? Why? She doesn't deserve it. Because she's done nothing for me. My friends are the best. Look at them. They love me more than everyone else, including my own mother. Those friends disappeared once he was thrown in prison. No one ever visited him. Guess what? The only one who went every week in and out was poor mother. The best friend you could ever have. My mother came and visited me. The court, this case went to Supreme Court. Now, you walk into, through the door of the Supreme Court, before you say hello to the judge, 20, 30,000 <laughs> evaporates into thin air. And if it's a big case, you, don't, you, you, need a, you need a lawyer, you need a barrister, and you need a QC, Queen's Counselor. That's the highest level. QC. I remember I, they asked me to go and, and, and help this young boy. They brought a QC from Melbourne. They flown him from Melbourne. They uh, provided the accommodation for him. Everything paid for. He was, he was here for two hours. He took $50,000 from that family. The best QC in Australia. Mate, he... I was in the, I was in the courtroom. This, this QC, he spoke very shortly. I don't think even the judge was... was following <laughs> what he was saying. He made the judge lose track. He made the prosecutor everywhere. He just smashed them. 50,000 for two hours. Uh, not bad, eh? Get the doll better. Mm, Centering. <laughs> Mom used to go prison. This young man realized it went to Supreme Court for three and a half years the case was on. Three and a half years he is in prison. They did not release him. Big case. Bond denied. Big case. The barrister said he's facing minimum 15 years. If lucky. Otherwise 25. Three and a half years of trial, he's in prison. Mom going. She started working two, three jobs to provide. She borrowed money from everyone under the sun to give for that court case proceeding. She put about $400,000 in court, um, you know, proceedings, uh, costs. And then on the last day where the judge was going to bring that hammer down and give his final sentence, mom is shaking, mom is gone, mom can't handle it anymore. And on that last hammer down, the judge hits that hammer and says, here, I hereby sentence you to three and a half years imprisonment, which you have already served it. Go home. The mother came to me. She said, when I, when, I, when I used to go and visit him in prison, he would cry to me like a baby, like a baby. Cry, cry, and saying to me, Mom, I am begging the Lord Jesus. Wow, you remembered the Lord now. Well done. I am begging the Lord Jesus to give me one more chance and get me out of this prison. Not for any reason. I'm not worthy. If it was for me, mom, I would rather die here because I deserve what I got. I asked for it. 
So I deserve this prison. I'm not asking the Lord to release me from this prison for my sake. I'm asking the Lord to release me for your sake, mother. You know why? Because I begged the Lord, get me out of this prison just to do one thing. I want to compensate you, mom, for every moment I broke your heart, for every moment I went against you, for every moment I made those tears come down your eyes. I want to come out and compensate you. I'm going to carry you on my arms like a baby. I will make it up to you, mom. I'm begging the Lord to do that. The Lord released him after three and a half years. He's married now. 